The Battle of Tanga, sometimes also known as the Battle of the Bees, was the unsuccessful attack by the British Indian Expeditionary Force B under Major General A. E. Aitken to capture German East Africa during the First World War in concert with the invasion force, see near Long Edo, on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro. It was the first major event of the war in eastern Africa and saw the British defeated by a significantly smaller force of German Askaris and colonial volunteers under Lieutenant Colonel Paul von Letoff Vorbeck. It was the beginning of the East African campaign of World War I, and is considered one of greatest victories of the Schutztrupp in Africa. The British retreat enabled the Schutztrupp to salvage modern equipment, medical supplies, tents, blankets, food and a number of Maxim machine guns which allowed them to successfully resist the Allies for the rest of the war. Chapter 1, Prelude Tanga, situated only 80 kilometers from the border of British East Africa, was a busy port and the ocean terminal of the important Usambara Railway, which ran from Tanga to Numorshi at the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro. Tanga was initially to be bombarded by British warships, but this part of the plan was scrapped. An agreement was in place guaranteeing the neutrality of the capital Dar es Salaam and Tanga, but now the accord was modified and it seemed only fair to warn the Germans that the deal was off. Instead, the British resolve to capture German East Africa was to be implemented with an amphibious attack on Tanga. Unlike the plan on paper, however, the attack turned into a debacle. On 2 November 1914, the British protected cruiser HMS Fox arrived. The ship's commander, Captain Francis Wade Caulfield, went ashore giving Tanga one hour to surrender and take down the Imperial flag. Before departing, he demanded to know if the harbour was mined, it was not, but he was assured that it was. After three hours, the flag was still flying and Fox departed to bring in the force B convoy of 14 troop transports. This gave time for both the Schutztrupp and the citizens of Tanga to prepare for an attack. The German commander, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Emil von Letoff Vorbeck, rushed to Tanga. He reinforced the defences with troops brought in by rail from Numorshi, eventually numbering about 1,000 in six companies. His second in command was former German East Africa Company Captain Tom von Prince. Chapter 2 Battle Captain Caulfield ordered the harbour swept for mines during the 2nd of November and well into the next day. During the sweeping, the force B commander, Aitkin, began the unopposed landing of troops and supplies in two groups at the harbour and three miles east of the city on a mine-free beach. By evening on the 3rd of November, the invasion force was ashore with the exception of the 27th Mountain Battery and the Farid Court Sappers. At noon on the 4th of November, Aitkin ordered his troops to march on the city. Well-concealed defenders quickly broke up their advance. The fighting then turned to skirmishing amidst the coconut and palm oil plantations by the southern contingent and bitter street fighting by the harbour force. The Gurkhas of the Kashmiri Rifles and the 2nd Loyal North Lancashire Regiment of the harbour contingent made good progress, they entered the town, captured the customs house, and Hotel Deutsche Kaiser and ran up the Union Jack. But then the advance was stopped. Less well-trained and equipped Indian battalions of the 27th Brigade scattered and ran away from the battle. The 98th Infantry were attacked by swarms of angry bees and broke up. The bees attacked the Germans as well, hence the battle's nickname. British propaganda transformed the bee interlude into a fiendish German plot, conjuring up hidden trip wires to agitate the hives. The 13th Rajputs failed to play a significant role in the battle as their morale had been shaken when witnessing the retreat of the 63rd Palamcotta Light Infantry. The colonial volunteers of the 7th and 8th Chutes and Company and arrived by rail to stiffen the Prestaskari lines. The normally mounted 8th Chutes and Company had left their horses at New Morshi. By late afternoon on the 4th of November, Letoff Vorbeck ordered his last reserves, the 13th and 4th Ascari fell company and, the 4th, had just reached Tanga by train, to envelop the British flank and rear by launching bayonet attacks along the entire front to bugle calls and piercing tribal war cries. 
at least three battalions of the Imperial Service Brigade would have been wiped out to a man, if they had not taken to their heels. All semblance of order vanished as Force B's retirement degenerated into total rout. Still outnumbered eight to one, caution overtook some of the German officers. Through a series of errors by the buglers and misunderstandings by an officer to disengage and consolidate, the Ascari withdrew to a camp several miles west of Tanga. As soon as Letoff Vorbeck learned of this, he countermanded the move and ordered a redeployment that was not completed until early morning. For nearly all of the night, Tanga was Aitkins for the taking. It was the most stupendous irony of the battle. Chapter 3 Aftermath Furious and frustrated, Aitken ordered a general withdrawal. In their retreat and evacuation back to the transports that lasted well into the night, the British troops left behind nearly all their equipment. Letoff Vorbeck was able to rearm three Ascari companies with modern rifles, for which he now had 600,000 rounds of ammunition. He also had 16 more machine guns, valuable field telephones and enough clothing to last the shoot struck for a year. On the morning of the 5th of November, Force B's intelligence officer, Captain Richard Meinertshogen, entered Tanga under a white flag, bringing medical supplies and carrying a letter from General Aitken apologizing for shelling the hospital. The streets of Tanga were strewn with dead and wounded. German doctors and their African orderlies worked tirelessly and with a fine disregard for their patients' uniforms. The successful defense of Tanga was the first of many achievements of Paul von Letoff Vorbeck during his long campaign in East Africa. For the British, however, the battle was nothing short of a disaster, and was recorded in the British official history of the war as one of the most notable failures in British military history. Casualties included 360 killed and 487 wounded on the British side, the shoot struck lost 16 Germans and 55 Ascaris killed, and 76 total wounded. Paul von Letoff Vorbeck initially estimated the number of British killed at 800 but later said that he believed the number was more likely over 2,000. The Germans subsequently released the British officers who had been wounded or captured after they gave their word not to fight again during the war.